Greetings and welcome. Today's topic is boiler accessories. There are many boiler accessories like super heater, economizer, air preheater, feed pump, injector, etc. But we will discuss only the super heater and economizer. Now what is a super heater? In a super heater, the wet or dry saturated steam is superheated by increasing the steam temperature above the saturation temperature. Whether it is wet steam or dry saturated steam, the temperature is the saturation temperature. But by using a superheater, the temperature of the steam is increased above the saturation temperature. A superheater consists of a set of tubes through which wet or saturated dry steam flows and hot combustion gases pass around these tubes. Say this is one row of tube in which wet steam enter at one end and the superheated steam escape from the same tube at the other end and during this time the hot combustion gases passes around these tubes so the heat exchange takes place between the tubes and the hot gases and as a result of this the waste steam or dry steam is converted to superheated steam so this is one row of tube that means single tube but there may be many rows of tube like this in this diagram there are six rows of tube and all the tubes at one end through which the wet steam enters are connected to one single tube and the other end of the tubes is connected to another tube and that is connected to the turbine because this other end is for the superheated steam. Now the question is where should be the superheated located or placed within the boiler? The answer is it should be in the part of the flue gases after the furnace. If it is a vertical then it is above the furnace and in some special cases the superheater may be placed in a separate or independent furnace. But normally in the same furnace the water tubes and superheated tubes are placed in some suitable location. And it is so placed that these tubes, superheated tubes are exposed to the hot gases passing from the combustion chamber towards the chimney. So this is a typical superheater with two headers. One of the headers receive the wet or dry steam through the anti-priming pipe and steam passes on to the other header through a series of tubes. The superheated steam goes or it leaves the header and it enters into the turbine through the steam stop valve. So the wet steam from the anti-priming pipe it may be wet steam or dry steam enters into one header from this header a series of tubes goes to the second header in which the superheated steams are collected and from this header where the superheated steams are there the steams are taken to the turbine by another tube and in between there should be one steam stop valve. So this is the complete superheater with two headers and three valves along with a tube. So the steam from anti-priming pipe enters into the header 1 through the valve V1. So this is the header 1 and this is a valve V1. If valve V1 is open, then steam, wet steam or dry steam will enter into header 1. 
and during that time the valve V2 is closed and from this header one the steam wet steam or dry steam will passes over many tubes and it will be collected in the header 2 this is header 2 and from this header 2 superheated steam passes to this tube and for that this valve V3 must be open and this is the steam stop valve so i repeat steam from anti priming pipe enters header 1 while valve v1 and v3 are opened and valve v2 is closed the wet or dry steam from header 1 flows down through a series of tubes and absorbs the heat from the combustion gases and finally enters the header 2 as superheated steam Superheated steam from header 2 flows through valve V3 which is open and then to the turbine through steam stop valve. So this is a simple 2D view that may be important from examination point of view. So these are the different parts leveled in this diagram say steam from anti-priming pipe valve V1 is open and this is the pipe through which the wet steam or dry steam enter into header 1 and from header 1 steam passes through a series of tubes and it goes to header 2 and from header 2 while the valve V3 is open it will go to this one and this valve is closed so it cannot go this side only it will go through the steam stop valve which is for the superheated steam and it will go to the turbine these are the combustion gases and the heat from the combustion gases is transferred to the tubes and thereby the wet steam or dry steam is converted to superheated steam superheaters may be classified based on the mode of heat reception or on the basis of movement of gases and steam. There may be convective superheater, radiant superheaters and combination superheaters. That means both convective and radiant superheaters. And so far as movement of gas and steam, relative movement or direction of gas and steam is concerned, this may be classified as parallel flow counter flow and combined flow both parallel and counter flow based on the position of the tubes and better to say based on the mode of heat transfer the superheaters may be classified as convective superheaters radiant superheaters and combination type superheaters so first one is convective heat superheaters in which the furnace is located at the bottom and the combustion gases are going out and because the superheater tubes are located above the furnace so these tubes are receiving convective heat and that is why this type of superheaters are called convective superheaters now in the same second example this is example of radiant superheaters suppose this is the furnace that means above the grate fuel is burned the hot gas will move up and this the superheater tubes are located around the furnace so this superheater tubes are receiving the radiant heat from the furnace and that is why it is called the radiant superheaters so this can also be represented like this this is the top view of the furnace and the superheater tubes we can see the radiant heat is received by the superheater tubes this is superheater tubes in the radiant superheaters the superheater are placed in the walls of the furnace of the steam boiler where the superheater tubes receives heat by direct radiation from the fire and re-radiation from the refractory walls so on the other hand in convective superheaters the superheaters are placed 
between or near the water tubes where the superheated tubes receives heat by convection from the combustion gases. The third one is the combination type. In combination superheaters, steam first enters the radiant superheater and then the convective superheaters. So that is why it is called combination superheaters. In this type of superheaters, the heat of combustion is transferred to the superheater tubes both by radiation and convection. Now based on movement of gases and steam, that means the relative movement of the gases and steam, the superheaters may be classified as parallel flow superheaters, counter flow superheaters and combined flow superheaters. So first let us see the parallel flow superheaters. The wet steam enters into the superheater tubes like this and the superheated steam is going out of the tubes like this. So if we see the relatively the steam moves from this position to this position that means from left to the right and hot gas are moving from the left to right. So if we see both hot gas and the steam is moving from the left to right and that is why it is called parallel flow superheaters. Now in counter flow Wet steam is entering and superheated steam is going out. And we can see the wet steam is moving from right to left and on the other hand the hot gases are moving from left to right. So this movement is opposite, the direction of the movement is opposite because the steam is moving from right to left and the hot gases are moving from left to right. That is why it is called counter flow superheater because of the counter direction of the steam and hot gases. While in the combined flow, we can see this is wet steam and this is superheated steam. The steam is first moving in this direction, then again it is moving in this direction. So the steam is first moving towards the left, then towards the right and the hot gases are moving from left to right. So there are both type of movement, one is parallel and another is counter and that is why it is combination of parallel flow and counter flow and this is classified as combined flow superheaters. Now let us discuss some advantages of superheaters. First one is it decreases the specific steam consumption of steam engines or turbine. Specific steam consumption means steam consumption per unit power developed. Specific steam consumption decreases. That is a positive point and that is why it is advantage. Number two the condensation losses. It decreases, that means superheater decreases the condensation losses in steam pipes and steam engine cylinder. When the superheated steam enters the turbine or steam engine, then there is no possibility of condensation because the temperature of steam is much above the saturation temperature. So, because of the condensation, there is heat loss and that is that is avoided because of superheated steam. Number three, it eliminates the erosion of the turbine blades. If wet steam enters into the turbine blades and the water particles strike the turbine blades, there may be erosion of the turbine blades. But if superheated steam is used, then superheated steam means it behaves like an ideal gas. So, the possibility of erosion is avoided because of the use of superheated steam. Efficiency. The efficiency of this steam power plant, steam power plant means everything, the boiler, condenser, turbine, everything as a unit is called steam power plant. The efficiency of the whole plant increases because of the use of superheater 
and that is why superheater is classified as accessories that increases the performance or efficiency of the plant. So I think this is enough for superheaters. So we have discussed almost everything about superheater. We have discussed about the classification of the superheater also and how it works and what are the principles and construction of superheater. So thank you for watching.